You're watching Epic Light Media. My name is Thomas Manning, and we took some cool photos of donuts for a local donut shop. We had an opportunity to photograph some pretty unique donuts. In this video, we'll discuss three helpful tips when it comes to food photography. Tip number one, shoot with a very high f-stop. Normally with photos and video, you want to have a shallow depth of field. This usually creates a very beautiful image or a cinematic look. When it comes to food photography, you want that whole item to be tack sharp so the viewer can understand what they're looking at. The photos that you're seeing here were taken for menus. And when somebody looks at a menu, they want to be able to understand what they're buying. It's important that the entire item is in focus. To achieve this, you need a lot of light and you need to shoot at a very high aperture. The photos that you're seeing here were shot at an F22. That was the highest aperture we could have. The higher the f-stop number, the smaller the aperture. To achieve this high aperture, we did use a lot of light, but we also set our shutter speed to 1 40th. Typically, 1 40th shutter speed is far too low for photography. But because our camera was on a tripod, this didn't matter. We made sure the camera was still and didn't touch it. Tip number two, tether your camera to a computer. Most cameras today can be tethered to a computer. You can either do it wirelessly, or for a quicker connection, you can wire your camera to the computer. This allows you to access the camera settings remotely without touching the camera. And you can make sure that every photo is perfect before moving on to the next one. This is the way the pros do it. This is the video village on a professional movie, so everyone can make sure the shot is perfect before you move on. Hey, what's up? What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> well, I've been on hold with for the last hour. I have some questions about some equipment. Well, what about, uh, there's better places. What about Hot Rod? Ah, oh, shoot. I should have bought my equipment from Hot Rod Cameras. If I would have bought my equipment from them, I wouldn't be dealing with this garbage. You know, Hot Rod Cameras is staffed by real professionals that care about you personally. So when you buy equipment from Hot Rod Cameras, they're not just trying to make a quick buck. If you call them with a question about some equipment you've bought, they're gonna answer your questions and not put you on hold. You know what? I give up. I'm going to cancel my order. Go with Hot Rod Cameras. Tip number three. Shoot with soft lighting. For the setup you see here, it might look kind of complicated, but really, we had one thing in mind. The softer the light, the better the light. We put a 4x4 diffusion right above the table, and through that diffusion, we shine two soft lights from Aperture. The Aperture 300D Mark II and the Aperture X. The reason why we chose those lights is because they're very bright, and the quality of light is beautiful. It matches sunlight, and it looks natural to the eye. Aperture has been able to achieve a beautiful quality of light that renders colors very effectively. When you're shooting food in particular for a restaurant, they need that color fidelity to be true to the actual product. And so using really high quality LED lights like the ones we used is imperative. For a natural look, try to shoot with one light source. Although you see two lights, they were effectively rendered as one light source through the 4x4 diffusion we placed over the lights. We knew this was one light source because when we looked at the shadows, we saw one soft shadow. Something that amateurs do when they're photographing food is they use too many lights. This creates multiple light sources which cross over each other, causing it to look unnatural and unflattering. To make sure that the opposite side of our soft light wasn't too dark, we used white bounce. You can use anything. It doesn't really matter what you use, as long as it bounces the light back. The client requested that we cut out each donut and that it didn't have a background or surrounding. That way the donut could be placed on different colored backgrounds for future ads. We could have shot the donuts on a regular surface, but we chose to photograph the donuts on a white surface. This caused the lighting to be even softer. When in doubt, photograph products against white. That way the colors are true and you get a soft, 
beautiful light. This photo shoot would have been very difficult for us to do without C stands. Although the kind of light you buy is important, what's almost more important is quality stands and lighting modifiers. If you don't own C stands, I would recommend that you buy some right away. You could get all the C stands you need for less than $1,000. I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> we didn't eat any donuts. The donuts were actually stale because if it's a fresh donut, it doesn't photograph as well and it can kind of uh, get misshapen when you're handling the donut. So every donut that you see in these photos was like a week old. So we didn't need any of them. We shot these photos on the Canon EOS R and we used Canon's 24 to 70 millimeter lens. It really doesn't matter what camera you use. So many cameras these days are fantastic. You could probably use your iPhone and take some fantastic photos. It really does all come down to the lighting. When it comes to photography, it really is just a matter of preference. But when you are being paid by a client, the creativity box kind of gets smaller and smaller. The client showed us photos of donuts that they liked, and we weren't able to just do any kind of photography we wanted. We were really after a very specific look. Preparation is so important. Before the food stylists arrived and we shot these donuts, the week before, we bought a box of Dunkin' Donuts and did some test photography in our studio. We also researched, talking as a team about what we wanted to achieve, what we liked about some of the donut photos and what we didn't like. Remember, with food photography, you actually have to have beautiful food to photograph. Luckily, the people making these donuts were total pros and did a fantastic job. But an important part of the process is Photoshop. You can see here what a difference Photoshop makes in the process. Some people might think that Photoshopping food is cheating, but I think it's all part of the process to make the food look as good as it possibly can. If you liked this video and you want to subscribe, please don't. Epic Light Media already has enough subscribers, but there is a food photography channel that I really love called The Bite Shot. You should check it out. There's a lot of great tips on that channel.